Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, I have a confession to make. I didn't notice Summer Rose's reflection in the last episode. And the reason I bring this up is because I want to put out a public service announcement on behalf of all people who do reaction content here on YouTube. And that is, please do not be the type of viewer that goes out of their way to comment and specifically point out when a reactor or a YouTuber or a content creator doesn't notice something that you notice on their first time ever watching the episode. It's kind of annoying. A lot of people have been commenting on my video letting me know like informing me as if the video itself doesn't explain it that I did not notice Summer Rose I want to let you guys know I never watch an episode of Ruby one time and uh, I don't know if this is a lack of object permanence on the viewers part where they think if Arnold didn't do it in the reaction then I I have to assume that he still doesn't know. I have to comment and point it out to him and everyone else in the comment section. And I know other reactors also kind of get self-conscious about like realizing that if they don't pick up on everything, it just ruins the experience. And I don't need that in my comments. I don't want that in my comments. I would rather someone comment and talk about what they liked about the episode, comparing their thoughts to mine, my commentary, my hype, my reactions, instead of literally typing and contributing, pointing out something that I didn't notice on my first time watching. Of course, obviously the reaction says itself so i wanted that to be a public service announcement and i hope that other people who do reactions to ruby feel seen and heard by this sentiment because i generally don't give a shit but like the more i see it i'm just like okay if this is annoying me i can only imagine how many other people didn't notice it whereas we're trying to be entertaining we're trying to be in depth we're trying to pay attention to the episode for the first time and then there's a viewer who's just sitting there in silence watching the episode and comparing like oh if i noticed it how come you didn't notice it don't do comments like that please it's it's annoying and I don't want to see it and a lot of people I promise you don't want to see it either anyways episode 7 of Ruby is here let's change the script happy April Fool's Day by the way at the time of this recording it is April 1st uh, but I feel like there's not gonna be any jokes in this episode we have four episodes left including this one leading down to the finale of the chapter last week's episode gave us a lot of really cool hype moments Bumblebee being officially confirmed for Blake and Yang as the canonical ship that we've been waiting ages for it seems like Jean giving the story of Alex and the reveal of Lewis her brother and kind of uh, having a little bit of uh, some like missing pieces to the story overall. And so the main thing that I will take away from the last episode going into this one is I feel like it's important to not put all of your eggs in one story basket. I feel like no one's perspective is 100% accurate being the cat, not really knowing what happened to Alex and Lewis. Jean being jaded, being cynical, being emotional towards the cat and his experiences with Alex doesn't really have the full story of how, who actually made it out into the real world. No one knows if it was Alex. They assume it was Alex. They assume Lewis got sacrificed then nobody really knows what happened up at the tree what happened between the two siblings and I feel like it's important to kind of keep that in mind going into the next episode because it's easy to point fingers and say you're lying you're not being truthful I know the full story you don't and so I just want that to kind of be something that I follow with going into this next episode Ruby was also having some like sussery with her crescent rose weapon I feel like she's kind of reaching a breaking point as well and uh overall I have no idea where this episode is going to give us uh Casey has been very uh descriptive with how these episode vibes are going to play out right corn city bop city and i think on twitter she mentioned that this episode is emo city so i don't know if there's going to be a lot of emotions going around and whatnot neo really hasn't had any type of relevancy like direct like pivotal relevancy to the ever after i don't know if she's just like pitched up a tent and has called this place home and she's kind of content without you know aside from like fucking around with ruby in the last couple episodes but i'm really interested to see where everything comes together i want to learn more about the story of the ever after the as we get closer and closer to the tree i want to know about the Jabberwalker. We theorize that the Jabberwalker could be a first ever human ascended creation thing because it is a one of a kind and we don't really know what happens to humans when they ascend because we don't know what happened to Alex or Lewis. Um, and like, we don't know if Lewis went on to like become like one of Ozpin's incarnations, which is why Ozpin knows about the story so deeply and everything else in between. But with all of that said, we are going to be jumping into Ruby volume nine with chapter seven. As always, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let us begin. Guys, this is not it, Chief. <laughs> this is not it, Chief. This is not a photosensitive warning. Warning, this episode contains themes that might be distressing for some... I uh, you don't have to call me out like that, Rooster Teeth. Uh, the episode is called The Perils of Paper Houses. And in the discussion we did the other day, we cross-referenced how Jean pretty much lives in a paper village and he's surrounded by fire in the fucking intro. Oh my God. Okay. Um episode seven uh it's only gonna get crazier from here 18 minute episode uh leave your thoughts in the comments as always and without further ado we're gonna be starting this in three two one now 
Good lord, man. I feel like we're gonna get a warning screen every episode now. All right. Oh, man. Um, I wonder if they're gonna add, uh, like, if they're gonna fill in the silhouette of Lewis that's in the intro. Because Lewis is in, like, a, Lewis is, like, silhouetted in black behind Alex in the mirror of the intro. So, similar to how they revealed John, like, they took the helmet off of the Rusted Knight. I'm just curious if they're gonna slowly start revealing characters like that, like, like, Neo's entourage and everything. All right, here we go. Sinking down into depths of nowhere, I am undone. Clasping tight onto memories, I know they'll be overrun. By you must live with balance, but balance is blind. Vengeance is a retired Let's go inside a new me. I'm ready, but who will I find inside? I've got a liquor, but could I lose my mind inside our world? Unwind. Oh, okay, so he's, he's still faded out there. I'm, I was just holding out hope. The Jean edit for the intro freaked me out last week, so I was just kind of like, oh, I wonder if they're gonna if that's gonna be a running trend for every reveal we get. I'm so stressed, chat. I can't fucking breathe. I can't, I can't breathe. <sighs> okay. Man's lives in a paper freaking mache. Oh, even the animals are Okay, that's not good. That's not good. Who thought it was a good idea to put fire around this place? This is the calm before the storm, I fucking know it. That intro, that warning sign. Oh, Ruby? Oh, sweetie. What are you gonna be? Fuck! I'm late! You're I'm late. late! I'm late! Oh my god, the rabbit! <laughs> I'm late, I'm late, I'm late! <laughs> Oh. Never oversleep yesterday. Oh, all the excitement. What? Nature, his role, his purpose. Always fix it. Does he have a purpose? Sorry. He has to keep I things in check. I'm late. Any second, there's going to be another. Oh my God! What the? Damn it! Right on time. Get to town. I'll meet you there. What the hell is happening? I'm never this upset when I oversleep. <laughs> uh, what you do love you mean sleeping. right on time? I'm sure we'll find out when we get down. What there. is this all about? Ruby, where's your weapon? Mm. Oh. Sorry. I'd rather leave Still it in there. Up. Hurry! People are counting. Stop! Stop yelling at her! You're not making it better! Jesus Christ. Oh my god, this place is going up in smoke. Oh, koi fish! Who makes a town out of paper? <laughs> That's what I'm Hello. saying! Who's this? Welcome to our village. We Ooh. hope that it pleases you. Hello. Would you be so kind as to tell us what you are so that we may serve you? Oh god, we're you serve us? We're human. Our town is on fire. <laughs> oh. No, we are quite safe. Oh no. We have our hero. Nah, nah, bro. John overslept. Okay, this music's pretty pog. Three cheers for the rusted knight. Okay. Is this a common occurrence? Back up. There's water everywhere. You'll dissolve. Hello, water. Ooh. How may I serve you? <laughs> Stop that. Jesus. Uh, I can't believe that almost happened. Oh, man. It's been ages since I missed the first fire. The first? Do fires happen often? Oh, every day. What? Why? What the hell? Bro, you're oh, going to burn oh, right, in your house yes. in the intro. Uh, introductions. These are the paper pleasers. <laughs> they're probably the most polite, most hospitable. Uh, after and they're people pleasers, paper pleasers. Because... That's their purpose. That's their purpose. Mmm. Damn, to serve others? <laughs> when Alex left me to die, Juniper found help. <gasps> brought me to the paper, please. Aww. Got me back on my feet. Aw, Juniper. I all day. Not just serving travelers, but serving the land they live on, too. They... <sighs> I'm so they stressed, chat. Peace. I'm so stressed. Unfortunately, they're a bit clumsy. But <laughs> that also makes them predictable. Yeah. They're gonna fly away. Thank you, Brave Knight. Aww, John. 
You named them? Uh. After your teammates? Uh. No. I named them after everybody. Oh! Wait, is that Ruby? Because it's red? I am the one called Ruby. <laughs> Ah, hey, oh, Jean, he has okay. to cope somehow. The disastrous lighting of the Morning Lantern is dealt with. That gives us just enough time to strategize before the calming Pebble Tower crumbles, crushing the Jean dam, seems very content village, here so already. I'm thinking, quick brunch? Huh? I could eat. <laughs> I could eat. <sighs> My life's. Oh, <laughs> he's filed out Over all the of years, the acres. Juniper and I have been systematically exploring as many of the nearby acres as possible. Oh. If you think you've seen it all here? Nope. Let me tell you, you haven't. Bro, I want to see that freaking ice cream candy land acre. What exactly have you been looking for? A way out? Anyone or anything that might be able to take us back home. Hmm. Which means okay. Jean has never found a way back. And what have you found? Nothing. So far? I mean, not much. But mm. I've got a really, really good feeling about this one acre we saw with a bunch of pyramids. Mm -mm. Sorry. Pyra? Um, Pira mids? Trying to make sure I follow. Jesus. Do you have any leads at all? Any other plans? He's been stuck here this forever. If he could go back, he would have. Look, I I'm sorry I didn't solve all our problems by myself, but. Uh oh. I, I can't just run off and let them die. But. Sean's kept protecting the village, searching for Sean's trying to be the hero. For an exit. We've got a really tight schedule to keep. Mm. Rather, you've got a tight schedule to keep. I beg your what? pardon? Why is that? This is the schedule of catastrophes that befall the village every day. Or uh, at least they would if it wasn't. Oh my mention. god. Are we really this, running errands here? No problem. Which means Stop I can go the out the goose. Keep searching without any interruptions. I gotta re-go back. With Juniper's Check speed and my familiarity with this place, we'll find our solution in no time. Uh, I will say, a lot's going on pretty quickly here. I, I feel like the conflict here is that Jean seems to be very comfortable. He's, he feels like his per like I almost feel like he's attached too attached to this place to really consider focusing on himself and it's like okay that's fine if the like he's like I can't let these things die but like these things were existing before you ever got here and now that he's been here for so long he's attached himself to where he feels he's responsible and it's kind of like well which is more important us getting out of here or you making sure that everyone's good and we get out of here so i feel like that's gonna cause some problems because if john hasn't gotten out of here yet then it's like team ruby can't really rely on him to help them out guys mm -mm. this is it look if there's one thing i've learned after all these years it's that patience pays off <laughs> That's why we're finally back together. I know I can find us a way out, okay? John's trying, though. I, I know it. I know it! <sighs> Seems like you hope. This isn't crazy. I'm not crazy. <gasps> this and he's losing it. Crazy, it's easy. You know, we still got time before the Pebble Tower falls. How Ruby is I just not about it right now. Up Juniper and show you around myself. Point out some of the clumsier papers. <laughs> just wait till you guys meet Neptune. <laughs> Let me guess, he doesn't like water? Damn it, Sean. This isn't a plan, it's a to-do list. Yeah. He's obviously been through a lot. Yeah. We can be frustrated later. Mm -hmm. Right now, Sean needs us. And Ruby's. we still need him. Aww, little. We just Aww. can't count on him. Then who does that leave <laughs> us with? Little so cute. It's obvious we need someone to guide us, or we could end up thrown back in time, or killed by the tree, mm. or worse. Well, if that's how everybody... The great tree does not kill. Uh-oh. That is what we keep trying to tell him. Uh-oh, Ruby can't get a fucking word and she's gonna snap one of these episodes. What? I do not wish to be rude, but... Hold on, let me back that up real quick. That is what we keep trying to tell him. But our hero still insists that we never ascend. Oh. What? I do is Jean not in denial? To be rude, but... Our work has been completed for quite some time. Who's this? Because of us, the land is beautiful. Is that Blake? But we have realized that, like ourselves, it is also very delicate. Huh. We would like to make something that is pleasing, but also resilient. I love the voice because of this, sound effect. We are ready to leave ourselves and merge mm. with the tree so that it might return us as something new. They feel fulfilled, but, but Jean is stuck in the past. Our is displeased by this course of action. Hmm. We tried reaching out to the tree. Oh. But our hero forbade. Oh, Jean, no. Then the wisest of our village suggested breaking from our physical form. Jean. So carry us back to the tree. But our hero is clever and brave. 
always keeping us from harm. Jean is being controlling. You must understand, the tree does not kill. It resurrects and rebuilds. We do not wish to displease our hero. Ruby looks so pissed. And I hope I have not displeased you, but we so desperately wish to return to the tree. This is not good. Jean is not in the right state of mind. He thinks he is. And if he kind of goes off and he's like, I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy, he's going to become a threat because then he's like detaching himself and he's not even letting these creatures live the life that they are naturally supposed to live as creatures of the ever after. He's like moving in and being like, I know what's best. He's he's kind of it kind of feels like an ironwood complex to return home so that we may carry on with our work. Return home, huh? huh. Oh, do not be sad. The wisest are going to topple the Pebble Tower today. I am sure it will work this time. <sighs> what makes you so sure? Oh? Nothing. Oh. What was that all about? I wonder if that it's was the so Blake, because the, the same color of purple. Weird, but sad. But it also means Jean might not be totally right about the truth. Exactly. It's not death. It's rebirth. From a certain perspective, maybe. Yeah. But... You don't, you're no longer what you. Lewis, then? Yeah. Jean said Jean wasn't there. The Thank cat you, wasn't even Yang! There. None of us know the full Thank story, you! and we never learn anything babysitting these villagers. Holy shit, that's what I've been we saying for the last Jean week. To let them go. But how? He's clearly not mm. all there. <gasps> uh oh. Did he hear you? Is that what you think? Uh oh. Fuck off. Jean! But what if the cow is telling the truth? Maybe not about everything, but about the tree. The tree's the last thing you should listen to them about. They're, they're just doing what they're designed to do. They don't care what happens when you get there. We're not hmm. listening to them. We're listening to the Afterins. And they're telling us that the tree is nothing to be afraid of. That they want That's to true. Go. They're not they talking don't know like the cat. What they want. You've seen the way they act. Nothing here is that straightforward, okay? Afterins are all either too clever, too stupid, or too crazy to trust. Are you an Afterin? You're looking pretty crazy right now. Why do you care so much about this village? Because I can actually protect these people. Oh no. Are your emotions freaking up the place? Oh, fuck, it's Neo's bullshit again. And now they're gonna get eaten. No. They found us. If these things get eaten, they won't ascend ever. I am not letting them down. Jean's trying to compensate for for, at, for Penny. Will never ascend. And we won't run this time. God damn it. Ruby, where are you at? Oh, this is not it, Chief. This is not it, bro. Oh my god. Jean is literally trying to compensate for Penny and, and Atlas. Oh! Summons? Oh shit! AC? Fuck. Oh my god! <laughs> Let's get it! Ruby is still nowhere to be seen. Where are you? Woo! Super Saiyan? I love this kind of co-op cho choreography. Hey, they're fucking relationship goals right here. Look at this. Ooh, careful. Shit. All right, you have you don't have your summon. What are you gonna do? Good job, Casey. I love this music too. Oh shit! Gravity dust, best dust, hog. Ruby, what are you, what's wrong? Oh, she's going through it right now. She is, this is her first fight since Atlas. Oh my God! What the fuck? This is so fucked up. There it is. That's the last scene from the trailer. Where is everybody? Dude. That's like her worst fears realized. Oh 
shit. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Neo is actually the cracked. From the market. But that's. Those were more than just her usual tricks. That was like. They eat and grow and. How has she gotten so powerful? The ever after. She didn't do it by standing around. Jesus I know that you may not Christ. be protecting this village. But you could at least help your friends when they're in danger. <gasps> no. She does not want this, bro. She's gonna Ruby? pop off. She's like, uh, you, you fuckers don't listen. No, no, no. Uh, what time is it? No! Uh, he's late! No! Are you oh, fucking Sean. kidding me? I could save them. Atlas all over again! Them and, and they're dead. No, Jean. They're gone. But they're not dead. But the ever after will be back. We'll bring them back. It's what they wanted. Right, Ruby? <gasps> Why are you asking me? <laughs> um Shit. We just because I'm the leader? Because I'm just supposed to have something to say. Oh my god. Because I don't. <laughs> Holy fuck. I mean, why do I have to be the leader anyway? Why do I have to always be the one to pick people up? Oh man. What about me? <laughs> no time, right? Gotta get home. Gotta help Jean. Gotta find someone. Y'all didn't just give her a chance. Everything up. Gotta stay positive, right? Smiles all around. Maybe even finally get our feelings sorted out. Oh my god, this is fucking Good for crazy. You, by the way, we're all so happy for you. Hey, e I'm sorry. Is this a bad time? Oh my god. Are we god. supposed to be mourning Jean's make believe friends? They're gone because of you. The walkers no. came for you because Neo hates you. Oh, and let's not forget the reason we're in the Ever After in the Fuck first off. place is because of your plan that didn't work. What about you? It's all about you. This is not Sean. it, dude. I'm sorry, I. This is not I know it, I'm dude. Not, okay, I'm, I'm not right, but how am I supposed to be? I've been alone for so long here on that bridge. I was the only one that could do it. I was the only one! And I... And now I have to live with that forever. Holy fucking shit. In here or back. Guys, <sighs> I know things this are is bad, so... but shut up. <laughs> don't do that. <sighs> Just don't. I cannot believe this, dude. I cannot believe this, dude. This is not fucking real. <gasps> I, I, I cannot believe that happened. <gasps> Holy fucking Christ, dude. They literally just went everywhere. They took it everywhere it needed to go in that last scene. Ruby literally sat. It was so weird. Like, she's never talked like that. She took shots at Weiss. She took shots at Bumblebee. She took shots at Jean, at Blake, at Atlas, at everybody. And then Jean, like, He's so torn up about Atlas and about Penny, and it. He's changed forever. I cannot believe this, dude. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh my god. This is insane. I need to see this scene again. This was. This was so cathartic and equally terrifying to witness. Why are you asking me? Um. <laughs> We just... Because I'm the leader? I can't believe. Because I'm just supposed to have something to say? They said everything. Because I don't. I mean, why do I have to be the leader anyway? Why do I have to always... The thing is, this has been boiling and manifesting and getting worse and worse. 
and no offense to any of her teammates but they have been kind of what's the word i'm looking for like they've just haven't been as prompt to check in on her and i feel like it's because they take for granted how ruby always bounces back from everything and every single episode she tries to get a word in she tries to catch her breath but something is always happening and she doesn't have a minute to breathe and i feel like this was where she was just like fuck all of you i'm gonna say what i'm gonna say and then i'm gonna bounce y'all can figure out what you want and it's made worse by the fact that her and jean are just at it because like jean's just been here forever he's got his own shit to deal with he hasn't been able to process it and then he's just reminded of atlas he's reminded of the fuck ups his failures everyone dying penny dying the the people ruby's plan getting thrown in her face as if they weren't all in it together it's cathartic because from my perspective it's like this is what i want i want ruby to say the things she's never said she has never lashed out like this and for all of them to have this reaction i don't know how i feel about blake kind of like getting stepping between ruby and blake when her sister is literally having a mental meltdown you know i'm a little conflicted by that just because it's like you should be consoling her in that moment this is your sister that's never responded never lashed out like that and it's just it's 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 terrifying to see, but it's also exciting to see because we've never seen it before. Be the one to pick people up. What about me? No time, right? Gotta get home. Mm. Gotta help Jean. Gotta Weiss has lashed out at Ruby a couple of times in this season so far, and this is Ruby giving it back to her. Find someone who isn't just going to screw everything mm. up. Gotta stay positive. And this is Ruby basically from the last episode when she saw Blake and Yang holding hands, this is her way of saying, oh, you two are good. Weiss is fine. Jean's content. But what about me? Doesn't seem like anyone gives a rat's ass. Right? Smiles all around. Maybe even finally get our feelings sorted out. Mm. Good for you, by the way. We're all so happy for you. Jesus. Hey, I'm sorry. Is this a bad time? Are we supposed to be more? Lindsay, you are a phenomenal voice actor. Like, I don't think I have to tell you at this point, but you are bringing out a character expression like this is literally a new character we're seeing for the first time and you are fucking killing it hoarding jean's make-believe friends they're gone because of you and then this the is the walkers came for you because neo hates you oh and let's not forget the reason we're in the ever after in the first place is because of your plan that didn't work actually you're here because cinder ugh, i get it it's ruby like this is okay this is just like they're saying things they clearly don't mean this is their emotions talking what about you it's all about you mm -mm. i'm sorry i i feel so I bad for john okay i feel I'm not so right, bad for this kid how am i supposed to be i've been alone <laughs> For years for so long he had to name these make-believe animals and creatures after oh, his friends bridge. i was the only one that could do it i was the only one <laughs> i love you so much miles I... I love you so much miles and now i have to live with that forever no matter what happens in here or back home <sighs> guys i know things are bad but shut up I will be honest, Blake kind of deserved that. Like, this is not the place to be a mediary. This is your moment to just be quiet and let Ruby say what she needs to say because she never gets a word in. I'm not saying that she, like, uh, good. She said, shut the hell up, Blake. But like, like, I'm willing to give don't Ruby the floor. Do that. Just don't. You know? Don't disregard my feelings, my emotions, my reactions to things, because that's that's all anyone has done. They've always just kind of not downplayed, but like you all have never given her the floor, man. And that's what happened. I can't believe, dude. I actually cannot believe this shit went down like this. I am fucking baffled. I thought someone was going to die. This is two weeks in a row that Kruby has been debating and stressing me the hell out to no end. Even the concept art Ruby looks done with the world. Look at her. I want to see, I want to see if I can go back and pick out and see like, the discussion is going to be fantastic. The discussion is going to be so fucking cathartic. Because again, this is like, this is Ruby being fed up with years and years and years. This is like the Watts to Cinder speech. And it's just Ruby dishing it back out to them because she's always the one that has to feel like 
like she knows the answers to everything. And I feel a, a level of satisfaction hearing her say that. I don't think she said it in the healthiest way possible, but it's understandable why she got to that point. And fucking my heart goes out for Jean because he didn't ask for any of this. He he got, you know, he got thrown into that situation and it's eating away at him constantly. This was a great episode, man. The discussion's gonna be even better, I think. I don't know what else to say. This episode cooked me, dude. <laughs> I am fucking roasted right now. Um, this was a fantastic performance. Um, I cannot believe how cathartic and shocking that exchange was between the two of them. It was like they were both speaking just straight facts, like neither thing that either one of them said was wrong. It's just that they are going at each other with such vitriol and venom, and they're just hurting so much that they're trying to hurt each other. You know, and Blake's trying to be the mediator, and Ruby's like, shut the hell up. I don't want to hear it. I want to say my piece, and I want to be left alone. And it's it's so heartbreaking and the funny thing about it is neo is just letting these characters eat each other alive they are nowhere near close to getting out of the ever after and with three episodes left i'm questioning if we're even gonna get out of the ever after by the end of this volume with three episodes they just had a massive fucking falling out right here that they have to reconcile neo doesn't seem like she's going to be resolved at all if if, if anything and like i'm not i'm not complaining i would actually like low-key i would kind of enjoy being in the ever after for another volume if there is more development to be had with these characters on this level but now i'm thinking that the next episode is actually going to be ruby coming in contact with the black with the blacksmith again and having that trailer conversation of what if you can do away with ruby rose like an old coat and become a different person she is at her most vulnerable right now and i would love it if this ep if i would actually prefer now that i think about it it would be kind of interesting if volume 10 was a part two to the ever after because the first half is just establishing ruby's kind of like slow build up to like this mental break that she's experiencing and then she has this pivotal identity change at the end of the volume and then volume 10 would be trying to kind of like reach like try to reach her or try to get through to her or like try to reverse that effect or something of that nature where we can go to these other acres where neo can be fully flushed out where the story of A of alex and the cat and all this other stuff can be developed more i i really feel like it's going to have to be like like super like like brief and like expedited if we're actually getting out of the ever after in this episode because i feel like this just set up for more stuff to develop afterwards and with three episodes left i just don't know how they're gonna pull it off if we are in fact going to vacuo it's just gonna feel like things are gonna be left unsaid but that's it Th those are my thoughts man this discussion is going to be fucking wild um i loved it i absolutely loved the exchange here i feel like it was completely warranted i feel like it's been a long time coming again it kind of reminded me of watts and how he he just went off on cinder and that's basically he was representing the fandom right there and i feel like both for jean and 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 ruby their exchange to each other is just kind of the boiling point of what people wanted them to kind of grieve out and get out there you know jean talking about how penny how killing Penny made him feel and expressing the loneliness that he had to where he's kind of attaching himself to these uh, afterins, like these stars naming them after people he actually knows. And I don't know, it's just, it's kind of falling apart, but um, I loved it. I love the episode. I was not expecting that level of distress. These uh, these warnings at the beginning, I'm not a big fan of them because they're kind of setting me up for a drive-by. But um, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I'm really looking forward to the discussion. Uh, with that said, thank you guys so much for hearing me out. I really hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts, my commentary, my reaction to everything else in between. Uh, but that's going to do it for episode seven. As always, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys in the discussion. And thank you guys all so much for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.